Hey all, it's Jason from GameRave.com, otherwise known as Danger Boy, and this is GameRave TV. Uh, welcome to our next episode of The Great Letter Legacy. Uh, we have decided to choose M because it was the next box I found. And um, M is a very, very well-rounded letter. Um, it has launch games, it's got whole series into it, like Madden and Mega Man, etc. Um, this one was actually pretty hard to do from a standpoint, just because there were so many classic uh, PlayStation games in the list, including um, one game that's been in every top, no matter what number you pick, list of uh, ever, which is Metal Gear Solid. And coming from that angle, um, it was originally really, really hard to just whittle it down to like the core which one game you know you needed to play. Um, so that being said, let's go down the list of what didn't make the cut. Uh, first off, one of the contenders was pretty much the entire Madden series. Um, with Madden Football, uh, it was one of the few series that A, basically had a game out every year, except for 1996, um, and allowed you to see the progress that the graphics and gameplay could make within a set time span on the same system. Um, the original Madden was just sprite-based characters on really cheesy polygon backgrounds and, you know, bare minimum assets here and there. And then by Madden 2004 and 5, you just had really well done, gorgeous for a PlayStation, uh, graphics, really good camera angles, good options, replay, you know, cameras, etc. And while admittedly 2005 men could very well have been the game to pick, um, let's be honest, most sports people, unless it's like an NBA Jam or a Blades of Steel, or an HL 94 for that matter, they're not going to want to go back and play the true classics and stuff. They're going to want to play the newest games, get the newest rosters, the newest stats, etc. So that's more or less why Madden, to a degree, most sports games probably won't make the top 27 list. Now, in that same department is the MLB series, Sony's baseball game. Now, like Madden, nice progression, you know, better graphics, etc. But what's interesting for both of these games is that they're one of the only two sports series still going. Um, with MLB The Show uh, 14 coming out and Madden 25 being the current one, um, they don't have any competition. Uh, MLB The Show has been going through PS1, PS2, PS3, and now PS4. Um, and with 2K, uh, with major uh, 2K Sports getting rid of their major league license, uh, the MLB The Show was the only baseball game for any next gen system this year, uh, which was a really curious problem. Um, but obviously they didn't make the final cut. Uh, the next series of games that were actually were pretty good contenders uh, was the Mega Man series. Um, on the PlayStation, Mega Man had a fairly robust uh, good life. Um, there was the Mega Man Legends games, uh, the side game uh, Tron Bone, and then X God Knows Whatever. Um, the only problem with these games is that, and this is just me, <laughs> don't send the hate mail. Um, to me, Mega Man died around the Super Nintendo era. Like, the X games were cool and so forth, but I, there was just something about having to learn the same patterns over and over again and the same difficulty and, like, just, uh, just like, there's not enough time in the day, man. Um, the Legend series, while they have a following, when I first tried them, I could never get into them just because I couldn't stand how the world didn't actually turn. It was more of, like, changing blocks, like if you're playing Cubit or something like that. And um, yeah, admittedly, I do want to go back and give Legends another try and so forth, I pretty much have to for Game Rave. Um, but, you know, if it came down to just the one game from the section that I wanted to play over and over and over again, it wouldn't be the Mega Man games. I know, I know, just bear with me. Now, as we mentioned before, the big one, uh, the 500-pound gorilla, or cardboard box, in the room is Metal Gear Solid. Um, Flat out, I love Metal Gear. Like it, I bought the $130 import when it came out. I bought the combined import when it came out. I bought the American version. I bought a second American version when I lent the original to a friend at work, and instead of just waiting for it to get it back from him, I just went out and bought it again. Um, and what's weird is, is as much as I love Metal Gear and near and dear to my heart, love it to death, the game hasn't aged well. 
Um, in fact, I noticed this problem when I was playing Metal Gear Solid 4, and I can already see the hate mail coming <laughs> in multiple degrees. But like Metal Gear Solid 4, one, although it was great back then, by today's standards, can come off fairly archaic. Um, Snake at times controls like a robot, um, like a really stiff, annoying robot, and sometimes his control scheme can get a little bit wonky if you're in the heat of a moment or in the middle of a battle. Um, but, you know, those dings on the armor per se, it's still one of the greatest games for the system, but the fact that you can buy it on PSN, on PS2 in the Trilogy Pack, on PS3 in the Complete HD Collection, which I still need to buy technically, um, there was no need to have it as part of this list because it's so readily available elsewhere. Now, with all those like big huge series aside, uh, there are a lot, a lot of honorable mentions uh, we should bring up here just to give it a general idea of what you might be missing. Um, right off the list, um, if you're looking for great for like a better term, filler titles that are actually really good. Uh, Mass Destruction is an amazing tank game where it's basically just go around and blow shit up. <laughs> Simple as that. Um, you've got uh, Mr. Driller, just an amazing puzzle game. Um, talk to Parker about that. Um, for some of the earlier games, Mortal Kombat 3. Um, well, no, the loading time was really bad in Mortal Kombat 3, and it did have its issues here and there. For the time, it was a really well done conversion. It was probably the closest to the arcade you could get at the time. Now, that one wasn't included, uh, aside from the loading times, because it's also available on various other places. Uh, the Midway Collections, uh, MAME, technically, if you want to be, you know, jerk about it, um, etc. Um, Matt Hoffman's BMX, if you're a Tony Hawk fan, uh, Tony Hawk's BMX, or Tony Hawk's BMX, Matt Hoffman's BMX, um, is a little bit rough around the edges as far as the control goes, um, but there's a lot more neat things you could do with the bike. Um, the sequel didn't do too well on the PS2, even though it made a grass hits, Thing, it died off pretty quickly. Um, but as far as the dime store, like pick up a cheap game just to play, Matt Hoffman's BMX is actually really good. And I could do $5 Pile of Shames for PlayStation. Ooh. You also have the Medieval series, uh, the Medal of Honor Underground series, and then uh, Capcom's Marvel Super Heroes, uh, which is really, really good port uh, to the PlayStation. Yeah, there's some missing frames, yada yada. Uh, but for the time, it was just an amazingly excellent port of the game. Um, the Marvel Super Heroes vs. Street Fighter and uh, Marvel vs. Capcom, not so much because of the missing frames and lack of uh, tagging and so forth. Uh, but yeah, um, plus Marvel Super Heroes is available on Xbox Live and PlayStation 3, so you don't really need to hear. All that said, it's time for the M game, and it is... Our M game is actually Monster Rancher Battle Card Episode 2. Uh, it's a collectible card game, uh, much like Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh, except it's not confusing. Um, when this game came out, collectible card games were all the rage. Just like absolutely ridiculously crazy. Like, you had Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, Magic the Card Gathering, um, I can't even... Uh, Mortal Kombat had a co collectible card game just all over the place. And I remember when I was doing the review for this game at Game Shark, um, what caught me off guard was that it was the first one I could understand and figure out. And um, that just pays compliment to the way the rest of the game works. Now, obviously you have your monster card and your skill cards and each card does its own thing. Um, but what makes Monster Rancher's legacy cool is just like the Monster Rancher games, you can actually take any CD, be it a computer CD, a game CD, any game CD, Sega CD, TurboGrafx, PlayStation, Saturn, what have you, and you can throw it into the PlayStation system and the game will generate a card for you. So basically all of your music CDs and all of your video games are basically single pack of cards to try and unlock instead of people opening them from people in the game. Um, which just makes the game that much more fun because now, in and of itself, you can try and find great cards from games you already own. And it was just a great, great gimmick um, that, to this day, I still think is one of the 
best things that ever came out of gaming. Um, the, the gimmick was actually used in a lot of games, not just the Monster Ranchers. Like, uh, there was a Japanese game from Squaresoft um, called Internal Section, I believe, and where that one, instead of creating characters, you actually use the CDs to create levels, um, just like how Vib Ribbon also did it. Uh, a, an amazing import game. I don't know if it's on PSN, but if it is, God's sakes, download that. Vib Ribbon's amazing. Um, probably the nicest thing I like about the game is the fact that the enemies that you battle, um, the actual card people, um, all have tells, more or less, um, which helps add to the strategies you try and figure out the best way to beat them. Like, if you have a person who is trying to store guts, which are basically the points you spend to play your cards, uh, you know that he's got some crazy powerful move that you should be worrying about trying to take rid of his guts or try and kill off the character you think has that damaging power. Um, there was also another character who uh, was evil and was basically playing you the entire time, meaning um, you each charge 50 cards, and if you run out of cards, you lose the game. And I didn't realize until halfway through the battle that he was basically just biding his time, waiting for me to spend all my cards, and I end up losing by one card. Like, that's, like, oh, so pissed, but so much, so much fun to learn. Um, but yeah, just, it's a really, really very, I refuse to use that word, um, fun game uh, to play and pick up. Um, as far as tracking down a copy goes, I don't know if it's on PSN or not, but um, it's usually about 15 to 20 bucks on eBay. The game in and of itself is more or less a card-based RPG. Um, it's basically just battling, choosing a place to you know go play cards and so forth. Um, I'm only about six to ten hours in on the game, uh, so there's definitely plenty of game time to be had with that. It's definitely a time waster, uh, so to speak. But there you have it. Uh, letter M is set in stone, and we will figure out what the next letter is in the 27-part series. Oh, we now have a playlist. The channel's improving. We'll see you guys next time. Take care. is Monster Rancher Battle Card 2. Battle Card? Episode 2. Uh, our letter M game is Monster Hunter Battle Card 2. Monster Hunter or Monster Rancher? Monster Rancher. Monster...